What do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up? People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. You have to make sure that your dreams, your aspirations and goals are so big that not accomplishing them is not an option. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. That that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. To all of you fighting battles alone, to all of you going against the grain, battling the naysayers, stay strong, keep going. Stay strong, keep going. I need all televisions off. I need cell phones off. Listen to me. Some of you are going to be broke for the rest of your life because of that little thing on, on, on the side. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life because of a little cell phone. I need you to study like you've never studied before. I need you up all night long studying. What is there that you know you need to do, that you want to do this, but for some reason or another, you've been holding back? I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the disappointment, the fear of loss is another thing. Because many times when we do those things that we know we need to do, we feel that we might lose somebody that we love very much and care about. We don't want to hurt anybody. I want to tell you something that every successful person has to do including you, believe it or not. Every successful person in this world has jumped. As Carl von Clausewitz said, pursue one great decisive aim with force and determination. When people tell you can never get done, you stop dreaming and you go back to knowledge. Find that thing that makes you come alive. Focus on it. Everything around you, the opportunities, the fact that you're alive. And we've all had experiences where we were working on something and we knew it was possible. And we did those things that were necessary to bring it into reality. We took the responsibility to make it happen. Other people couldn't see it. A lot of people didn't believe it. You were attacked, you were criticized. It has nothing to do with opportunity. You've been given opportunities. The problem is you're not operating in your greatness in that opportunity. So that's why you stuck on that particular level. People were opposing you, but you kept on doing it. It was hard, it was rough, it was difficult, but to you, it was worth it. And eventually you got to a level, you know, can nothing stop me now. Anything you're struggling to try to accomplish, whether it's health or love or relationships, whatever it is, if you're struggling, it represents a simple fact. Your subconscious programming doesn't support that conclusion. I dare you to use your imagination. I dare you when you're broke to use your imagination. I dare you when you're rich to use your imagination. I dare you under every single circumstance. Keep dreaming. Keep looking at your dream. Because that is how you bend the universe to your will. That is how you impress people. That is how you capture the human imagination. And if you want to do something, 
extraordinary and be remembered. You've got to get so good that you're performing at a level that has never been seen before. That is the only path to set the bar ridiculously high and then surpass all expectations. You can't put it down low and then beat it and say, whoa, look at me. We say that in zero-based thinking, you ask this question, is there anything that I am doing today that knowing what I now know, I wouldn't get into again today if I had to do it over? We call this a quink analysis. Knowing what I now know, quink. In times of rapid change, there are always areas in your personal and business life that knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into again today if you had to do them over. Your willingness to ask and honestly answer this question is the key to remaining flexible and quick on your feet in times of turbulence. How can you tell if you have a zero-based thinking situation in your life or business? Simple. Stress. Whenever you experience ongoing chronic stress about any person or situation, you should ask yourself, if I was not now in this situation, knowing what I now know, would I get into it again today? This is a great question. Now here's another question for you. What percentage of the time do you think that you will turn out to be wrong? Well, the answer, according to the American Management Association, is about 70%. 70% of your decisions will turn out to be wrong in the fullness of time. It's amazing how many people will stay in a bad situation or continue with a bad course of action because of their unwillingness or inability to admit that they made a mistake or that they were wrong in the past. But remember this, when you made the decision, it was probably a good decision based on the situation at that time, but now the situation has changed. Now you have to evaluate your situation based on the current reality. If you want more freedom in your life, you have to have more discipline. If you don't have any discipline, you'll end up with absolutely no freedom. You'll end up being a slave to other people that boss you around. There's all kinds of problems that can occur if you don't have discipline in your life. And the more discipline you have, the more freedom you're going to have.